40 years or so, there's been a dramatic rise in obesity in children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten worse in the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. also at the point now where children are coming up diabetic. Right. One out of, one out of four. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to when I was a kid, a, a child being diabetic was almost unheard of. Right. Now it's nearly one out of four children are diabetic. Mm -hmm. Feed oils <laughs> okay. are the, probably the worst thing. We're uh, talking to Dr. Biamonte, who is a specialist in candida, the thyroid, mm -hmm. radiation. And you've also developed a system like a computer software that thoroughly analyzes blood work and I believe hair, right? Hair and spit. Correct. Yep. <laughs> Saliva. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So per my blood work, I have like all the markers of Hashimoto's and I've done various things to like try to deal with that. Right. But I'm curious um, on in, in your book, what is like the perfect diet you would say for, or a thyroid healthy diet? What is, what is that? Well, there's two. Oh, actually. okay. Okay. If you have Hashimoto's, the odds are is you have candida. Okay. And that's what's causing your autoimmune problem. Okay. So the, the correct diet for that would be a candida diet. Okay. If you don't have Hashimoto's and you're just suffering with hypothyroidism, then yeah. the, cor the correct diet is to eliminate foods from the Brassica family, number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the Brassica family, uh, the, those foods contain thiocyanates, which inhibit your thyroid function. Yeah. And then you need adequate protein to stimulate yeah. thyroid function. And you need a certain amount of carbohydrates, but you want low fat. Fat is bad for your thyroid. Really? That slows the thyroid down. Mm. With the exception of coconut oil or MCTs. Oh, that's like good, good fats. Mm -hmm. Good fats help your thyroid. Yeah. Like salmon and all, you know, particularly MCTs are known to really stimulate thyroid function. Hmm. Okay. So well, it would depend on which, what problem it was. So like I have Hashimoto's and I, now you're going to have a few things to say about how I eat, I think in a second, but a year and a half ago, apparently I have Hashimoto's. I actually haven't technically been diagnosed. I just saw my blood work. <laughs> well, either um, your, your TPOs or your thyroid globulin were elevated. Super, super elevated. Okay. Yes. So if you came um, to me as a patient, yeah. the first thing I would do on you is I test you for candida. Okay. And I would do my special blood thyroid blood panel. Okay. And I would also do a hair mineral analysis. Okay. Which might end up being the most important out of everything. Yeah, I was noticing you were mentioning that. Nobody yep. does that. <laughs> and they're that's they're missing one third of what you need to know about thyroid if you don't oh, do wow. that test. Oh wow. And even if my hair is bleached, it would still work? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we need virgin hair for it to be accurate. <laughs> oh, okay. So you just hair. only hair would work. You can't have oh. like super dyed bleach. You'd probably hair. use your pubic hair then. Oh, wow. That's interesting. That makes yeah. sense, though. But why the hair analysis? Well, obviously, we would test you for candida because if you had candida, that would adversely affect your thyroid. It could stimulate sure. the autoimmune response. Sure. We would check your uh, check you with my blood panel because there are things on my thyroid blood panel that most doctors don't look at which okay. can make a big difference. Like for instance, yeah. reverse T3. Most yeah. doctors don't look at reverse T3. Right. Also your insulin levels, fasting insulin. Mm -hmm. Elevated insulin suppresses thyroid activity. It suppresses the right. conversion of T4 to T3. Right. I'm and, curious. I should literally go over my blood work with you. <laughs> you might find it very interesting in, in, the, in the sense of this. I'm not asking for medical advice. I happen to have it on my screen. But okay. like since I follow a very... So let me let me let me just part. complete let me complete where I was sorry, going. I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry. The next thing, the hair analysis is important yeah. because yeah. in your cells, the thyroid receptor sites are based on trace minerals and minerals. Okay. So this is why you get a lot of people who have all the symptoms of low thyroid, and they keep being told by their doctor their blood test is normal. Mm, yeah. If you take if you mess up the mineral receptor sites. You'll be functionally low thyroid, even though your blood test says you're fine. Mm, and and so that, that's, why that's you information. You can only get that from the hair. And mm. primarily what you're looking at in the hair is the ratio of zinc to copper and the ratio of calcium to potassium. Calcium oh, wow. and copper act as governors to thyroid hormone. In other words, if you, if you were to look at this like um, an apartment building and you have the doorman there, calcium yeah. and copper are the, are, are the guys who are trying to keep people from coming in the building. So they, they desensitize your cells to the effect of the hormone. While oh, wow. on the other hand, the flip side, yeah, potassium and zinc sensitize your cells to the effects of the hormone. 
So okay. if your if your ratios are right, it's yeah. going to or or however your ratios are going to govern how well your body responds to thyroid hormone, whether it upregulates or downregulates. Oh wow! Okay, that's so interesting. And then I'm... you're also looking at your selenium levels because selenium mm -hmm. and manganese and mm -hmm. uh, iron are also involved in the conversion of T4 to T3. Mm, and they're okay. also involved in the in the conversion of T3 of, of reverse T3 back to T3. Mm, interesting. And then you're you're looking at arsenic, mercury, those particular toxic metals because they have a tendency to suppress the thyroid uh, function and a lot of the conversions. Like nickel, wow. nickel, nickel and cadmium do this by knocking taking wow. zinc out. Mercury okay. also takes out zinc. So when you, you see, when you're looking at it, it's not the direct effect of the toxic element on thyroid it's yeah. the effect of the toxic element on the minerals that the thyroid needs mm, that's so interesting how would someone get those you said mercury and you said a couple other ones but how would well there's right? arsenic the bit yeah, really bad ones bad ones yeah. for thyroid are arsenic mercury and cadmium and where mercury. do we get these how do we consume them like what are they in believe it or not they're around you all the time oh they're unfortunately <laughs> in personal care items Okay. Sometimes they don't need to list it on the label. Cadmium oh, is in wow. anything, anything in a can, just about. You get cadmium is in there. Other than, oh, like wow. you have you have t old fashioned cans which have a really high amounts of cadmium. The aluminum okay. ones don't, but the more mm. old fashioned ones are very high in cadmium and nickel. Yeah. Oh, wow. But it can be in your water. You know, that's mm. like one third of what I treat people for are toxic metal problems. Of thirty percent of all the people who come to me. So if you if you figure it this way, if I see if I see 300 people in a month, uh, 100 of those people have a toxic metal problem. Oh, wow. So now, where did they get that? A mm -hmm. lot of times it's from well water. Mm -hmm. It can be from the pipes in your house if your pipes are old. Mm -hmm. If you live in a, a, a house that has old copper plumbing, the mm -hmm. copper leaches out of the pipes and oh, gets wow. into your body. Now you're copper toxic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we have a reverse. We recently got a reverse osmosis machine. And That's I think good. that. Yeah, I think that's helping. That's yep, it takes everything well. out of the water. It tastes amazing, by the way, that, that water. Um, I don't really have to show you my blood work because I didn't prepare for that. But I could tell you that like my insulin levels, my fasting insulin, all of that was like very good. I got um, bad news like, for you. The what? Lab, the lab ranges are inc incorrect. Oh, no. I'm in Columbia. Do you think they're still incorrect? Yeah, I'm sure they are. The lab ranges okay. are way too liberal. We have our own reference ranges that we use for those, those guys. Mm. Like reverse T3. They'll accept yeah. a reverse T3 that's 20 and higher. Okay. Reverse T3 really shouldn't be over 10. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that my reverse T3 is definitely higher than that. Um, they looks like they're in the ranges. Like my tests look like they're in the ranges. The I only know. thing that didn't look like it was in range was like the Hashimoto's numbers. Right. Um, those were like way elevated. So for, I wanna, for, for people yeah. in general. Yeah. Doc, Dr. Weston Childs yeah. makes a great line of thyroid products. He's a thyroid specialist. Yeah. And he makes a great out. line of thyroid products that people can access on their own and try and see if, you know, if they're lucky, it will hit their, their patterns. Right. He makes a Hashimoto's product, which is very interesting because his Hashimoto models product is, is also antimicrobial. So okay. it's meant to kill some of the organisms that cause your thyroid to go autoimmune oh wow i would love to look into that i mean i'm taking here's selenium i'm taking selenium and i take myo and acetal here's and the problem we don't know nah. that you need, we don't know that you need those oh well i'm taking them <laughs> yeah well, we don't know if you need them we don't know if you need the selenium uh okay that's so interesting yeah I'm, you, can, I, you can take you can you re read something that says all these nutrients are good for your thyroid but that's right. meaning having a normal level that doesn't yeah. mean taking it to excess where it becomes mm -hmm. toxic. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to like get these things like checked out. Yeah, you need um, to test to find out if it's the right thing for you. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, now you talk a lot, you have a whole book about candida. And I know that, that that's like the basic of so many problems, I believe. At least 30% uh, of the U.S. population at any given time has candida. Wow. That's crazy. That's this it's all from crazy. eating junk food, right? Basically, no. It's not, no? no. Oh, okay. It, and it's not from junk food. It doesn't. Your diet only makes it worse. Okay. It's diet whatever, makes... whatever you do that disturbs your biome causes candida. 
because a healthy, normal microbiome stops candida from multiplying. So it's got to be something that you do that disturbs your biome. Mm, okay. So what are the key things that would disturb somebody's biome? Well, it mm -hmm. would be antibiotics, the okay. other, the obvious, steroid yeah. medications. Mm. Can I ask a question about that one specifically? Like, what if you're taking like topical steroids? Like if you have eczema, would that disrupt the thing or it is it? Do, it does. It does. If you do it long enough. Yes. Okay. You, okay. It's not, not just for a month. You have to do it for years and it, mm -hmm. then it will. Oh, wow. Yeah. So antibiotics, steroids, your diet makes it worse. What about therapy? Mm, okay. Would knock it out. Sure. Um, if you go, if you, if you swim yeah. and you're in a chlorinated pool, yeah, that will knock it out. Okay. If you're, if you're an alcoholic, that will knock it out. Okay. Makes sense. If you take the various drugs, uh, prescription drugs, knock it out all the time. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So then people get these overgrowths of bacteria. What does that result? Uh, sorry, candida. What does that result in like symptomatically? Well, very interesting because there's about probably 150 different symptoms candida can cause. Oh, wow. It ranges from digestive symptoms to neurological symptoms. Okay. And it also could be endocrine symptoms. Mm, because okay. candida candida imbalances your hormones. It imbalances yeah. your immune system. It causes autoimmune. It causes autoimmune, which is heightened immune system, but it right. also suppresses your immune system. Oh, so wow. it all depends on the person. Basically, okay. candida is like the, like the COVID vaccine. Okay. Whatever's wrong with you, after you, when you get vaccinated with, from COVID, whatever's wrong with you is then going to show up harder and faster mm -hmm. later on. And candida does the same thing. Okay. Oh, Whatever your weak links are, you're going to get hit with by, by the candida. Oh, wow. That sounds pretty terrible. It is. Um, I don't know if I have candida. I eat almost no Let carbohydrates. Let me see your tongue. Move, move close. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. No, that doesn't look too bad. Usually you can tell somebody who has candida because their, to their tongue will be heavily coated white or, or yellow. Okay. And they'll have geo geographic tongue. Have you ever seen geographic tongue? Is that where they have like a, a map on a map yep. on their tongue? Yep. Like there's lines yep. everywhere. Yep. Okay. People with like can orders. people with bad candida chronic typically have that coated tongue, and they have geographic tongue. Mm. But that's again, that's not a hundred percent. But that's a good sure. indicator you can go by quickly. Okay. I mean, I only you're gonna think I'm crazy when I tell you what I eat. I basically ate eggs and meat. And uh, I tried to do like a pescatarian diet last week, and I felt very bad. And so then I went back on to my eggs, meat, and chicken. So you, you're doing carnivore? More or less. Sometimes I do eat some carbohydrates. Like yesterday I tested some and I felt really bad today. So <laughs> well, car the carnivore diet is the principal diet that's used to get rid of candida. Oh, okay. Can candida feeds on sugar and starch. Right. And once you eliminate sugar and starch from the diet, candida is more amenable to dying when mm. you attack it with the right, with the right herbs. Mm, okay. I understand. So I've been eating this way for like or more than a year and a half. And, um, like, That's why your tongue is clean, probably. Yeah, exactly. And I often think, okay, I mean, I can eat some olives, I can eat some pickles, I can eat some avocado, but other stuff really kind of sets my stomach off. Um, and recently, I quit caffeinated coffee. I don't know. It was, it was an attempt to try to l reduce my thyroid Hashimoto numbers, but maybe I need to actually send my hair to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know any. I don't know any reference that shows that coffee is bad for the thyroid. Oh, okay. Um, I was just thinking it keeps me stressed and maybe stress elevating cortisol or something like that could be. Yeah, that's a maybe. possibility. Sure. I'd be less stressed drinking not a pot of coffee a day. So <laughs> okay. That's um, valid. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I had another question. Yeah, about I was curious like your take on like a carnivore diet versus a vegan diet versus keto or like appropriate diets people should be eating or what your thoughts are on that. It's a very simple, it's very simple. Yeah. I'm a very simple, straightforward person. Great. Tell me your blood type. Uh, I, uh, O negative, O positive, O positive. Okay. If you're an O, you can do the carnivore thing. Uh, okay. Okay. If you're an A, forget about it. You might as well hang yeah. yourself. Okay. So then it makes sense that when I was eating fish for like three days, I all of a sudden felt a dramatic change in my mood. And in my, uh, I was stressed. I started crying randomly. Well, like fish doesn't have as dynamic of a protein. Yeah. That's the same protein as, as red meat does. Right. If you're right. a typo, you need red meat. Mm, okay. Makes sense. The my old, whole family. The, the craziness with diet 
yeah it occurs because people become diet gurus of a, a champion of a certain diet because it worked right. at some point for them <laughs> right and then once it worked for them they figured everybody has to do this right and what they fail to see is that a lot of times when you change your diet yeah you, you change your diet you're breaking the homeostasis your body's in which might be wrong mm, okay yeah exactly and, and in many in many cases a vegetarian diet or a vegan mm -hmm. diet is a low stress diet that anybody who does that for a, a period of time will feel better right because, because unfortunately a lot of the people are eating the meat they're eating is garbage right I mean, not everybody eats grass-fed antibiotic hormone free right. meat a lot right. of people just eat the supermarket meat which is making them toxic and killing them so mm -hmm. of course if they go on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet they're going to feel better but that's right. only going to last for a certain period of time because they're they're running up against the fact that their body as a type o needs nucleic proteins that you don't get from veg vegetarian sources mm -hmm. you only get that from meat interesting i dramatically felt a huge difference i'm so in tune with my body three days i was like oh can't do this anymore it was purely to try to lose weight actually okay. i'm like no my stability and how i feel is much more important than losing some pounds at this point in my life <laughs> are you unable to lose weight on a carnivore or keto diet yes I am unable to lose weight on a carnivore diet. I will say, let me do a caveat. Can you get into ketosis? I have no idea. I never check it. Okay. Well, that's something to look at because if you can't get into ketosis, one of the major reasons people can't get into ketosis is they have low thyroid. Ah, okay. Well, we know that's the case. <laughs> I know that um, I lost, so from my heaviest, I've lost 50 pounds. Being on carnivore, I've lost about 30 pounds and it kind of just stays there. Oh, so and I lost great. that very fast and now I'm still wanting to lose like 30 more. So you but, may either need to make sure your thyroid's tuned up. Yeah. Or you might need to do some weightlifting and put some muscle on because muscle okay. is what burns calories. Okay. I'll do that because I, I predominantly, I mean, this is my job. This is something I love to do is just talk to doctors and talk to people about their diet and stuff like that. But uh, I have a different job, but I'm still sitting. So <laughs> a lot. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. I will take that advice. Um, can we talk about parasites for a Must second? We? <laughs> yes, we must, because okay. I have gotten some parasites before, and this is too much information, but I will explain the story and hopefully it doesn't gross you out or the other people out. But a couple of years ago, I was, my menstrual cycle started. And I was jumping on the trampoline. Don't recommend that combination. I felt very bad. And then a black thing fell out of me, a black worm fell out of me. And that was the, like the scariest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I blamed it on living in Colombia. But anyways, I do you like not a be that far off the mark because countries that have lower standards with um, sanitation are more apt yeah. to acquire parasites. Oh, okay. But how about in the U.S.? What about people in the U.S.? Are they all like, oh, at higher standards? It's well, later. wait a second now. <laughs> how, now in the U.S., how many foreigners do you have in the U.S.? A lot. I'm now a let's, lot let's let's not even take up the Venezuelan gangs and the, the migrants. Yeah. Just before before Biden Harris, you yeah. still had like lots and lots of people, foreigners who came in here and moved here and whatnot. Sure. So then they go home for a trip and they come back. So you have mm -hmm. parasites traveling on all these airplanes all over the right. world. Right. So you can go. Oh, this yeah. is this is the, the fallacy of parasite testing. Because yeah. if you're in New York City and you go for a parasite test. The odds are is that technician was only trained to identify parasites in the North the North America. Oh, wow. He's oh, not wow. trained to identify parasites there in Asia. Mm. It's not in the textbook they make you study. Right. And But look how many parasites do you think are coming from all those other countries. So you yeah. can have them, and when you go for a test, the, the guys, he's not going to see them. Mm, okay, that's crazy. Yeah, because I've asked other doctors about this before, and they're like, no, it's not a big deal in the United States. Like, third world countries and i'm like mm, i don't know i've had my rude awakening about a parasites so no, that that's that's total ignorance that's somebody who's yeah. afraid he's, <laughs> he's, he's afraid <laughs> can't confront and, worms being in yeah, your, that's in your true. I, could, I could tell you stories insane <laughs> i had a i had a patient who lived in texas who lived around the panhandle okay and she she lived on a farm and she had bot bot flies now bot flies will land on your arm and they will yeah. inject eggs under your skin Ugh. that cause then they grow into larva and then yeah. they become different types of worms. Oh, wow. And she went to the doctor and he was, and she's telling that him 
that she sees these things crawling under her skin. <laughs> and he looked at her and he, he was like looking to send her to a psychiatrist. Oh, wow. And, and then right in front of him, yeah. the worm broke out of her arm, crawled down so her gross. arm and went on his desk. Oh, and then he decided she wasn't crazy. And she thought that they were in a horror movie. <laughs> well, no, but doc doctors have a very low confront of parasites. And one of the reasons right. why, unfortunately, is testing for parasites is very... Um, how it's very archaic. Mm -hmm. um, it's very it's it's very poor. And okay. if you think you have parasites and you go to the doctor and you tell him this and he does a stool test on you, the odds are is he's not going to find the parasite. Mm, okay. And one of the reasons why is your own your body's own digestive fluids digest these parasites in your system. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by the time you give the stool sample, I've had people who brought to, into my office worms that came out of them, and they took those worms and sent them to a lab, and the lab said they didn't know what it was. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's, that's a, crazy. It's like a reoccurring joke in our in our practice. Sure. So, <laughs> so because of that, <laughs> yeah, the new stool tests that are out now, which yeah. are based on DNA, are far more mm -hmm. accurate. Okay. Because they're not looking for the parasite. They're looking for the parasite's DNA. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I want people like to not be scared of parasites because I think we're all have a huge parasite load and that could be a total generality. But if people went into it with like, oh, I'm already loaded full of parasites and don't be scared about it, there's a solution to it, then then it's easier to confront. But it took me a little while to confront what I saw in my toilet. Well, let's look <laughs> at this this way. Every yeah. ethnic just about. Yeah. Has a tonic a substance that they give kids every year yeah flush parasites out when i was yes. a kid the my old italian grandmother would chase me around the room with this big spoon of castor oil and honey okay because she was going to give this was going to flush me out the yeah. jewish people do a thing with garlic and milk every okay. every ethnic has something oh, that they do that, yes. that flushes them with parasites now that they wouldn't be doing that if they weren't there sure yeah exactly exactly and when my daughter was very young uh, and we took her to like a pediatrician appointment and I was still nursing her and they're like, you need to give this to your daughter. It was some medicine and do it every six months. They want you to do some medicine every six months right, here. That's a parasite purge. Yeah. And then I'm like, can I take it also? She's like, no, you're nursing. And I'm like, okay, but my daughter can take it, but I can't take it. <laughs> that doesn't right. make any sense. <laughs> well, when you're nursing, things can unfortunately get into your, your milk, mm, which may not okay. be so good for the baby. So. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I like to, when I remember, I just take albendazole. I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but I just, I just take albendazole. It costs like a dollar here. So I have done, I know that there's like holistic ways to get rid of parasites. And I did that before and I felt terrible for a week. I, it was like I had the flu for a week. So albendazole, that whole class of drugs are mostly for pinworms. Oh, okay. For the more common worms. When yeah. you get, when you get into using artemisia and, like the North American recipe of parasites is artemisia, which is wormwood, black okay. walnut, and then cloves, clove extract. Oh, okay. Those three things kill most of the parasites that are commonly found in North America. They don't kill parasites to, from other countries. You, uh, there are different herbs, different herbs that do that. Oh. The, the Chinese have a great selection of herbs that kill parasites from all over the world, spe uh, specifically Way Laboratories, W-E-I. Way Laboratory. Way Labs has a great selection of, of, of herbs that they've tested on parasites from all over the world. Mm, They're the most okay. reliable for alternative uh, parasite formulas. Okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know when the last time we did one was, but like uh, when I was with my daughter in the States and she was itching, you know, complaining about itching at night down there. So yeah. we did a, we just went to Walmart and got the $10 pinworm stuff. I don't even, she slept better that night, so I think it helped. <laughs> well, also... That happens to be a really good diagnostic. Oh, okay. When you have rectal, rectal itching is primarily caused by three things. Okay. Candida can cause rectal itching, but it can cause rectal itching at any time of the day or night. Okay. Hemorrhoids cause rectal itching, but that's usually after you have a bowel movement. Okay. Rectal oh, itching in the middle of the night is usually caused by worms because worms are nocturnal. Worms mm -hmm. become more active in the middle of the night. So if mm -hmm. you have if you consistently have rectal itching in the middle of the night or you you also grind your teeth at night, that yeah. very easily could be a sign of worms. Oh, I used to do that so bad it would wake me up. There you go. 
but but it kind of stopped actually in the last year. So maybe how I'm eating is not providing the type of food that those things need. I don't know. Or maybe the albendazole that you took knocked them out. Or maybe the albendazole, <laughs> whatever that was. And there's some other one that a doctor told us to take that was cheaper. And we we do it like the whole family does it. If I do it, everybody's doing it. Just and your pets way. need to do it too because oh, pets, yeah. pets often are a way of getting uh, parasites. Mm. When it, when a pet licks you, unfortunately. Yeah. The saliva has a lot of worms, uh, worm larvae. Ew. Ew. There's three so, dogs and two cats here and so a chicken can... and lots of chickens. <laughs> so it's good that everybody pur uh, purges for parasites, including the Yeah. Pets. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I'll keep the pets in mind for next time. Um, let's see. We talked about the disgusting parasites. Let's talk about it more. Um, I had some more questions. I'm sorry. We just don't want to get political when we talk about parasites. <laughs> yeah, not now. <laughs> Loads of them in, <laughs> in D.C., boy. Not 10 minutes, uh, 10 days before the election. Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, so, the parasites come in, there are many different types of parasites, and many of them do oh, different yeah. things. The human yeah. body has actually acclimated to some parasites. There to are get some, rid of there them? Are some, no, no, it means they live, they live in harmony with them. There like symbiotically. Yeah, there are certain tapeworms that have been around for tens of thousands of years that the body now has very little harmful reaction to because your immune system has, has learned to get along with them. Oh, oh, that's interesting and gross. <laughs> but so, so you could have this tapeworm living inside of you and it does nothing good or bad. Nothing it's really like harmful that your immune system's worried about. It doesn't mean that it still is not going to act like a tapeworm and then truly um, work through work on the definition of a parasite, which is to, in Latin, to eat off the table of another. Okay. Oh. So it's still going to oh. steal your food. It may still make you anemic, but it's not going to be as you want, may not have the bloating and the violent reactions to it that you might have had, mm -hmm. um, you know, hundreds of years ago to that same parasite. Okay, I understand. Now, on and the appropriate herbal medicines, I, that's how I get rid of them in people. Oh. Worms bring with them bacteria and viruses. Mm. Worms are hosts of bacteria and viruses. Oh my God, it sounds so much. Now it's making me gross. The worms wasn't so gross, but as soon as you said bacteria and viruses, I feel sick to my stomach. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it's true. Yeah. So if you have bladder worms, you're, you, a person with bladder worms will chronically have UTIs because of that. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. I didn't know we would di di dive so deep into um, to this paras parasite subject, even though I really wanted to talk about it. Um, so for me, for instance, being on this carnivore way of eating helps every time I try to dive it back into vegetables, I have a huge problem and I don't know why necessarily that is. I don't what know. What is the if, problem that you have? Um, like yesterday I had some tomatoes with onions, onions I've been doing for a couple days and I've been fine. And now I threw some tomato and I can do olives and that's fine. Then I threw in some cooked tomatoes and this morning I didn't want to get out of bed. I had like, I'm like froggy. I didn't feel as awake. And then my stomach has been upset most of the day. I did, uh, I did some, uh, cabbage. I did three days of cabbage. It was sort of fermented. I tried to ferment it. And then by day three, I had cramps and I was in bed. I wanted to throw up. I couldn't, you know, and so I was like, okay, I feel like I want to eat vegetables, but then I just, I try and it's always not fun <laughs> except like five avocados, pickles, olives, maybe a couple more. Well, how your digestive system works yeah. Is that when you eat food, the food first gets hit with your saliva. Okay. There's an enzyme in your saliva called ptyalin, which okay. starts to break down carbohydrates that are in the food. Yeah. Then it goes into your stomach, and your stomach produces hydrochloric acid. And right. the acid starts to destabilize the proteins in your food and basically turn the food into a mush that we call chyme. Oh, okay. Then it leaves your stomach. It goes into your intestines where it gets hit with bile, which emulsifies yeah. the fat. And okay. pancreatic enzymes, which further break down the carbohydrates, the fats, and the proteins so that they can be absorbed into your bloodstream and then utilized as nutrients. Okay. But, but your, yeah. micro, your microbiome also is very important in being able to digest these foods. Okay. The bacteria assist your digestion. Okay. So very often in a case like yours, the microbiome is off. Yeah. And that's why you have food intolerances like you do. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, I came to this way of eating mainly to lose some weight, but I, in the back of my mind, I was hoping it would resolve the, the gut issues of like diarrhea, bouts of diarrhea, cramping, gas, bloating. And it did in three days. All of those symptoms of gut disturbance went away in three days. And so now I'm like, but I would like go to try off the diet. If you go off the diet, do they come back? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, it started like today with the with the tomato. With the, this is it, your biome again. Okay. See what you're doing in your case is you're removing triggers from yeah. your diet. Yeah. You're not changing the cause. Oh, okay. The cause yeah. is the cause is your biome isn't good, and because your biome is is not good, your biome is interacting allergically. Mm -hmm. with these foods okay so the thing to do is rather than totally eliminate the food you change your biome get your biome more normal so that your biome can tolerate the foods and then then it's up to you if you choose to do low carb mm -hmm. or whatever it's up to you but at yeah. least not get your biome normal so your biome can handle all these different foods mm -hmm. you'll notice okay. you'll notice other people in the world aren't running around saying that if they you know eat ate a tomato for a few days they have all these troubles <laughs> right. And I'm like, what's wrong? I love, I will, I'm visiting Chicago soon. I'm from Chicago. I just want a Chicago dog and I don't want to feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Do get, get yourself a good stool. Do the GI map from um, Diagnostic, Diagnostic Solutions. Get Is a that GI what map from companies? Diagnostic yeah. Diagnostic Diagnostic Solutions. They have a, okay. they have a very good, they, they, their flagship stool test is called the GI map. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, all the other all the other labs that are out there all copied the GI map. Oh, okay. So, okay, good. I, I'll check that out. Yeah, because like my brother has Hashimoto's. Another brother has like a Lyme's disease. My mom can only eat this. We can all all only eat very specifically, but it's all different. Each of us eat very differently, but it has to be like super specific. And I, I think that's terrible. <laughs> like my kids can eat anything. I know they're kids. They're out in the sun a lot. They eat a lot of red meat. Their their blood type is also type O. Uh, they eat a lot of fruit. They don't eat a lot of junk food. They do not eat a lot. That's not even in the house. But really? some, when we go out, we eat it. If they ask for it, they can have it. And then, like, if they eat something that makes them feel really bad, they won't eat it again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think it's crazy that all of us have different things that we can eat or we feel really bad. And me, it's, like, instantaneous. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Not sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd have to say it's your biome based on what I know so far. Okay. Well, I will I will check that out afterwards. And then that brings me to my next question. You developed, can you tell us about the software that you developed about blood work and your hair? How did that happen? Um, did it's that it's called BioCybernetics is the name of the company that owns the software. And oh, it's, okay. a, it's a software program that which is able to look at blood work and go through about three to four, I think it's 33,878 algorithms that it has. Yeah. And it looks it looks through the blood work and it's able to spot imbalances in your system. Okay. By looking oh, wow. at the blood work from a more expanded viewpoint. It's a, it's like we we had about a hundred nutritionists yeah. and, and um, scientists who gave us their uh, time and knowledge that we it gave to the computer. It's this was one of the first artificial intelligence that ever existed was this computer. Oh wow. Oh, wow. This was developed back in the 80s, originally for NASA. Okay. For, well, it was it was Grumman. We were working for Grumman then, and we were doing this for Grumman to give to NASA for them to use on the astronauts when the astronauts were in, in expended, extended space missions so that we could keep their protein correct and their, their bone density correct and whatnot. That's how it started. And then it okay. became this huge holistic alternative health thing because you yeah. can, the, the computer can look at your blood work and in five minutes, it can print out more knowledge about your blood work than it, that it would take some of the greatest scholars in the world days. Wow. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. How come people don't know about this? Why are we doing it the old-fashioned way? <laughs> because it's not covered by insurance, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. my I just paid a lot of money out of pocket for all the blood work that I got, specifically so I could do the reverse T3, the reverse T4. And very specific tests that wouldn't otherwise really get asked for. Yeah. So okay, well, those, those are kind of those blood tests are kind of obvious. Yeah, this, this computer program can take a basic blood workup, like something we typically call it a chem panel, a chem okay. twenty four or a chem twenty six. Yeah, it takes that with a CBC and a WBC, very basic stuff, and it's able to 
it's able to look at combinations of these tests and figure out things that somebody would not know. Okay. Like we okay. had a patient, we had a patient once this mysterious illness. Yeah. And we ran them, we ran their tests through the, the software and the software came up exactly with a problem. Uh, there was a problem with their hypothalamus communicating through this part of the, the, the brain, which is called the hyphocele stalk. It actually is the first part of the brain as you go up the spine and it vibrates and it oh, sends wow. signals through the body based on this vibration. Now the computer pinpointed that's exactly where their problem was. They went to Sloan Kettering and, and Sloan Kettering and spent about $10,000 worth of blood work. And after oh, a few wow. days, the doctor said, we think there's something wrong with your hypothalamus, but we don't really know what it is. Oh, wow. Gives you an, an idea of the difference in sophistication. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's a lot of money. It's <laughs> a lot oh. more money. So that's great. That's a great service that you guys offer because you can get down to like the root cause of why somebody is feeling oh, yeah. the way they are. Totally. And then you, um, do you only do like holistic or do you use medicines in combination with supplements? No, I don't use any drugs. I don't believe in drugs. I think that okay. drugs are, I think drugs are quite bad. Yeah. I only believe in drugs in when it comes to emergencies or something like okay. that. Yeah. And that's the difference between our type of medicine in this country. Everyone is drugged up. Right. On one thing or another. And drugs don't handle, like, there's no such thing as a prescription drug deficiency. Right? <laughs> I love drugs that you said that. Drugs don't handle the cause of the problem. Right. Because the cause of the problem is strictly biochemical and biological. And that has to do with the roots of in nutrition for your body. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. One of the reasons I started this channel is I was blown away by the amount of people eating a meat based diet getting off of psych meds. And so I have several stories on my channel of people saying, I got myself off the of psych meds. I don't feel depressed anymore. And I understand that there's more causes for this than just nutritional, but that shows you how many people are so nutritionally deprived that it puts a them into of, depression. A lot of those people are typos. Okay. And they're trying to be vegetarians or they're just not getting enough protein and they're affecting mm -hmm. their neurotransmitters adversely. Mm -hmm. The neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and epinephrine and norepinephrine, all the neurotransmitters are built from amino acids and mm -hmm. you get your amino acids from meat. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And there's so much, so much, uh, what's it called? Anti-campaigns against meat, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right now, <laughs> um, Europe, it. Europe has already banned laboratory meat. I love that. Thank you. Oh my so goodness. Bill, Bill Gates is not going to make any money in Europe <laughs> trying to peddle That's that great. stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's great. I love that. And uh, here in Colombia, the meat tastes different. I don't know if it's all grass fed, uh, grass wouldn't finished. Be, wouldn't be surprised if it is because you have a reputation. Yeah, it, but it's delicious. I noticed that the first day I was here, this was years ago, and I ate a cheeseburger. And I'm like, what is in this cheeseburger? It is amazing. And then when I went back home, I ate an in and out burger. I'm like, this tastes terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's the difference between grass fed, hormone free, antibiotic free. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I, I, I think we covered a lot today. I didn't have anything else. Do you have any questions for me? I'm not a doctor, but. <laughs> uh, no, no questions. But one thing um, yeah. I do, I do want to point out for everyone listening. Yeah. Is in the last 40 years or so, there's been a dramatic rise in obesity in children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten worse in the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. also at the point now where children are coming up diabetic. Right. One out of one out of four, mm -hmm. and if you go back to when I was a kid, a, a child being diabetic was almost unheard of. Right. Now it's nearly one out of four children are diabetic. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It's it's nuts. It's 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 nuts. No, it's not nuts. It's seeds. Oh, it's seeds. Seed okay. oil. <laughs> seed oils okay. are the probably the worst thing. Mm -hmm. Seed oils do everything bad that we're being told sugar does and cholesterol does. Mm -hmm. Everything that's blamed on cholesterol and sugar is really mm -hmm. coming from seed oils. Okay. And especially the diabetes that, that children are coming mm -hmm. up with. Sure. So it's that is a major problem that needs to be addressed. Sure. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you 100%. We do not use seed oils in my house. And I will say, when I was a child, I was very chubby. Um, and I ate junk food. But I think I think what you're saying about the seed oils, it was on the rise in the 90s. Yes. Um, was. When I visited last year, my son is very thin. He's he's he was seven. He's eight now. 
we two weeks of like eating out and at McDonald's because he said he wanted to eat McDonald's and we we're just doing the fast thing because we're out, even though I don't promote eating this way. He got chubby in two weeks. If we would have been there another month, I think he would have been extremely overweight. Um back in the back in the 1840s, I think it was cottonseed oil mm. was used primarily as machine oil. And somebody got the idea of why can't we feed this to people and we can sell a lot more of it. So they came up with all these different ways that you could then consume cottonseed oil. And then that became canola oil and this oil and that oil. And the, but the only safe fats really for people to eat are yeah. saturated fats. We've now got in a 360. Yeah. Everybody thought saturated fats were bad. Now we're finding out those are the safest. Mm -hmm. Mono Monosaturated fats like olive oil and also, also coconut oil mm -hmm. are very safe. Ghee is very safe to use if it's real ghee. <laughs> Okay. And then beef tallow. All of these saturated fats are really the safest things for your heart and for your body overall. But seed oils are absolute poison. Okay. Uh, I'm happy you said that. I might chop that part out and actually put it at the beginning <laughs> because it's so important. I eat a ton of butter and I feel I like eating butter. I don't like grass the fed, grass fed butter is very healthy for you. Yeah. Exactly. And people in people in the United States over the next few years are going to be learning a lot more about this because Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who happens to be a expert on seed mm -hmm. oils, mm -hmm. he is going to be educating the country over the next few years with President Trump about all of these bad things that we're all been. I hope these guys don't get shot because there's oh, big I pharma, know. big pharma, mm -hmm. big food is going to come after them like crazy. But all of this garbage that that they're feeding us, if you look yeah. at how how sneaky it is. Big yeah. food comes in with seed oils and all these bad foods that make you sick. Then you have to go to Big Pharma to take the drug to handle the symptom that you got mm -hmm. now from eating all this bad food. They've got yeah. it all. They should get an undertaker in there and they'd have a complete cycle. Oh, my goodness. But um, I believe it's not a fast. It's a slow progression to death. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're not, yes. They're I not think. feeding us heroin. They're no. feeding us slow progression to death. Uh, drugging that's, how us. They, that's how they get away with it because you can't, yeah. can't notice it. Right. Yeah. And now exactly. we know the truth. There are, there are a bunch of books out now about the dangers of seed oils. Yeah. It's so many. And I, uh, there's this book, the big, the big fat lie, Nancy, uh, Ian Teicholds. <laughs> yep. I know the book. I know yeah. The book. There's a lot of good books and data out there to just help people to like unbrainwash ourselves of how we've been educated. And the food pyramid, it's like backwards. Like, let's yes. flip it upside down. <laughs> yeah, well, then that's, that's correct. That's a good point. <laughs> because the meat should be at the top. And then maybe, if any. if you're a type O. Oh, okay. Or, or if fish, you're a type or a, chicken. <laughs> yeah, you have to make a, allowances for what type you are. Because mm -hmm. this is, we're speaking more from the viewpoint of an O because you and your family happen to be O's. Right. If right. you and your family happen to be A's, A's yeah. are more uh, farmers. See, mm -hmm. an O is a hunter-gatherer. Mm -hmm. Those originally come from Africa, where the yeah. people were hunter gatherers. So they yeah. would go out for days and hunt the animal, bring it back, and everybody would feast on the animal for right. a week, and then they go back out and hunt. A's yeah. the farmers, so right. A's are much more uh, have a much higher carbohydrate diet that their bodies mm -hmm. genetically have gotten used to. Mm, okay, I think my mom is A or AB. Is AB a blood type? AB Some... is a, AB is the latest, the newest blood type, and they can eat a little bit of everything. So how oh, it goes, okay. to no, summarize it all, O's yeah. are carnivores. They do okay. hunter-gatherer, paleo. Okay. okay. A's are more vegetarian, lean more towards vegetarian and more towards Asia. Mm, okay. B is Mediterranean. Okay. More the Mediterranean diet. And AB is the latest blood type who does fine eating a little bit of everything. Oh, okay. So maybe my mom is not AB because she is not recent. <laughs> She's 60. So no, maybe no, I, don't, I don't. I mean, the, the, in the evolution of the blood type, not. not oh, okay. Maybe she is AB. Age of the person. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe she different. is AB. Yeah, the be. rest of us are all O. It makes sense, and also genetically, like in the genetic line of this body. Um, my great grandmother was American Indian, and I know that they like a lot of buffalo. So I, I wonder. If, I mean, the blood is genetic. So. Yes, it is. The blood type is your is your first hint of your genetics. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. I could like I can just sit and eat a bowl of ground beef and be totally fine. I had to yeah. what it helped me was get over my like food addictions and my like wanting to just eat carbohydrates all the time, which made me feel very bad. And this way of eating helped me to get over that. And I'm no longer like having wanting to just eat junk food <laughs> and, and or anything carby, which was probably the candida. 
maybe it was candida. Candida does make people crave. Yeah. Carbs. Or worms. Worms or. It's um, interesting that not too long ago, a study, several studies came out showing that microorganisms actually communicate with each other. Mm. And if they're able to communicate with each other, who says they're not able to communicate with some um, inane part of your body where right. it's telling you to eat starch? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, exactly. But getting all of that out, I think if I had candida or I had parasites or whatever, it just helped. But I like I would like to understand this uh, GI map thing and understand basically like why I can only eat like five things now and not feel outside of my carnivorous diet and not feel right. bad, you know. Well, to a typo, a carnivore diet is not really natively a challenge at all. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It so, was so easy. <laughs> it was like, I'm like, wow, I, a diet that I can stick to? Now it makes sense though. Like That would be like a blood a blood type A eating beans and rice. Uh, yeah, my mom loves that. My yeah. mom loves that. But I've got her, she's eating fish now and eating eggs. And I think that's fine. Okay. She, she eats her vegetables and her, she loves her salads. You know, and that's Good. okay. Yeah, yep, I'm happy. Okay. I'm I'm just against what you said, the seed oils. And I wish I had my Make America Healthy Again hat. It's I'll, I'll have it in a week or so. <laughs> no, we definitely need to do. America has been lied to tremendously in terms of right. food. It's just incredible. Right. And the it's seed oils great. are seed oils are some of the worst things you can consume. Wow, they totally. And there, there are there are graphs you can look at which are fascinating on diabetes. Yeah, and directly following the increase of seed oils. That's what follows the diabetic curve. If you okay. look at if you look at ingestion of seed mm -hmm. oils and the frequency of diabetes, they go and cardiovascular disease, they all go together. If the, the American Heart Association, if their diet was so great and so true, why mm -hmm. is it that since they've been around pushing their diet, cardiovascular disease has gotten worse? Right. It follows the curve on the seed oils, seed right. oil consumption. Totally makes sense. And you feel better when you get them. You feel less inflamed. All those markers go down. I, one of my blood tests was homocysteine and it was like below whatever the range was. So it's probably, probably normal. <laughs> yeah. Homocysteine is an oxidant. We've heard of antioxidants. Yeah. Homocysteine is an oxidant that actually damages your blood vessels. It causes free radical damage to your blood vessels, which then allow the whole clotting process to start. Right. So having right. that down is very good. It's Beautiful. That's great. I think, and I think it's probably eating a diet that's very close to appropriate to lead to what I should be eating, so the body can build the amino acids and all the all the things it needs to do. It needs to do. I um, agree. Dr. Biamonte, if people wanted to utilize your services, how do they reach out to you? Oh, well, they can just go to one of my various websites. They can go to okay. health health dash truth dot com. Health dash truth. Okay. Or they can go to the New York City Candida Doctor. Or the New York City thyroid doctor, either website. Oh, great. Awesome. I love that. Um, I want to say thank you so much for your time. I loved our, our chat here. It was very uh, enlightening. Yeah, I agree. Next time we'll talk about the aliens. Oh, on my other channel. <laughs> Let's do it. Aliens, we didn't talk about radiation. Mm -hmm. We'll do it next time. time. Okay. You do. okay. All right. Thank you.